guys. Um, first off, I'm going to apologize for the really harsh lighting on this because I haven't decided if I love it or hate it. Just, I knew for this particular video I'd need really good lighting to be able to show you guys what I'm going to show you. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll keep using this, maybe I won't, but for this one, we're going to use the fluorescent lighting anyway. So anyway, I recently bought, like within the past week, and they just arrived today, something that I'm not sure if it amuses me more, just the fact that these merely exist at all, or the fact that somebody took the time to make them, or just... I have so many questions, but basically, two words I never really thought I'd hear together are Liza Minnelli and comic books. I mean, okay, admittedly, I have a couple of imported ones from, like, Brazil or some shit, or South America from the 70s that I honestly don't know what they say because I don't speak Spanish, but one was basically like a pictorial version of New York, New York, and one was a matter of time. So, I mean, it wasn't really of Liza so much as it was of those two movies. So, that aside, I, I kind of had high hopes just from hearing that this was going to be a thing, thinking maybe it'd be like, um, do any of you remember that show, The Big Gay Sketch Show, from, like, the mid-2000s? There was a sketch on there, I loved it, um, called Super Liza, where basically the gist of it was that Liza was this superhero who went around saving gay people in need. I don't know, it, it was weird, but it was also hilarious, and I loved it, and I was kind of secretly hoping that maybe that's what this was, was maybe they made, like, a comic book series out of Super Liza. They didn't, but, um, <laughs> although if anybody out there wants to do that, I would buy it if you made it, I'm not gonna lie, but basically, just the fact that it's something Liza that exists that I didn't already have was reason enough for me to buy this, because... Yeah, it's no secret that I'm probably one of the most obsessive Liza fans on the face of the planet, so had to have it. And there's four different covers, so I had to buy all four because I am a loser like that. Um, there was also an ebook version. That was actually how I found out about this first, was I got an email advertising this ebook. They didn't even specify that it was a comic book, actually. It was just that there was a new biography. So that, that, that was how they marketed it, a biography on Liza, um, that was like $3.99 on the App Store, and they didn't really give any information whatsoever about it. So just out of curiosity, I clicked the link. I wasn't expecting much, given it was $3.99, so I really didn't expect it to be much of anything. I didn't buy it from there, but I digress. So I saw the cover, and I thought... Something's weird about it, and I stared at it for a minute before I realized that's not a photo. That's a really good computerized painting, but that's not a photo, huh? So then I clicked through the other pictures and I realized this isn't a normal book. This was done in comic book style. Oh my lord. Um. <laughs> And I really didn't know what to think of it, other than, honestly, I thought it was a joke. I didn't think this was really a thing that was a thing. Like, I thought somebody had made this really elaborate prank or something. I don't know. I don't know why somebody would waste their time doing that, but this was my assumption. I kind of didn't give it a second thought for, like, half the day. Until BroadwayWorld.com decided to write an article about the new Liza comic book series, and I was like, wait, 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 hold the phone. This is actually a thing. This isn't just a one-off. This actually exists. So I read the article, and I decided, 
All right, the more I read about it, about how there's four different covers and that there was a print version, I was like, all right, I'm not gonna buy ebooks because I don't really like to spend money on a digital thing that I don't have a physical copy of to hold in my hand. I just, I'm old school, I don't like to do that. So um, finding out that there was print versions, I went and I searched around online and I went to um, comicfleamarket.com, sorry, I had to look at the link again, and I found all four covers on there. And it seems like that's the only place that's selling all four different covers. Amazon is selling a couple of them, but last I knew they were only selling two of them. This one has all four. Um, this one apparently is the really exclusive one. Um, it's limited edition. They only printed 100 of this cover. So naturally, I pounced on that immediately to make sure I got one, just because if there's only a hundred and it made it to broadwayworld.com, you know damn well there's going to be a shit ton of people pouncing all over that now, so I wanted to be one of those 100. So that was $9.99 for that one. Uh, this one was limited is just exclusive. It's also a bit more than the other two, so I don't know if there was um, a limited production of this one too, because the other one just says limited edition cover, this one says exclusive cover, and this one's $5.99. So, I don't know, it seems like, whatever, I, I, yeah, I didn't read too much into this. Basically, I figured I didn't go into it with really high hopes of the content. Because I saw some of the screen caps of the inside of the books before I bought them, I was thinking, well, if nothing else, I like the covers. Even if these suck, I like the covers and I can stick them on my wall, if nothing else, if all else fails. So, I mean, I, I still might do that. But, um, what I like about this particular cover is that they went with, like, modern day Liza on it. And nobody does that with caricatures of Liza. And if they do, they're usually cruel about the way that they animate her. This one's not. This one, I think, is tastefully done. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. And I think this one's actually my favorite because of it. So, there's that one. There's also... This one is one of the two standard edition ones. This was only... $3.99 for this one, and I don't know, I feel like this is my least favorite of the covers. Um, I think they're going for trying to evoke the Liza with a Z cover type feel without being a total ripoff of it, but um, even though they went with Cabaret Liza for it. And the other standard edition one was the hyper-realistic one, but is still a digital painting. This one. Yeah, don't be fooled. That's not a photo of her, guys. That's look close at it. You can see the brush strokes. Um, but yeah, so that's the four different covers. This one was also $3.99, and that's also the cost of the ebook is $3.99, so I was kind of iffy when I bought them on, wait, are these all print editions, or are these two cheaper ones ebooks? So they're all physical copies. Uh, apparently they were put out by Blue Water Comics. I've never heard of them in my life, but I also admittedly am not usually a comic book collector, so I don't know if that's really much of a thing or not. They apparently, <laughs> according to the back cover, also have done channel surfing Charlie's Angels. Um... Uh, Betty White Rules the World, and Channel Surfing Wonder Woman. So, apparently those are all also a thing. Yes, Betty White also gets her own comic book, which, you know, if these had been of higher quality content-wise, I might actually buy the Betty White one, but, you know, after seeing what these consist of, no, I don't think I'd invest again, so... Sticking with my Liza just because it's Liza. If it were anybody else, I would not have bothered. But because it's Liza, yes, had to have them. So, anyway, 
the bigger question was, what exactly is in here? I knew it was going to be the life story. I knew that being only 24 pages, it's going to be a really watered down life story. But what can you do with 24 pages illustrated in comic book format? Not a hell of a lot. Let me put it that way to you. Um, this is probably the nicest thing I could say about it. Admittedly, I haven't thoroughly read through them yet, but just in flipping through them a few times over, um, it seems to be a weird amalgamation of random Liza quotes th that they threw together in a really hodgepodge fashion that doesn't really make much sense whatsoever. And this ongoing theme of taking a line at a time from mine hair and peppering it throughout the pages with no real rhyme or reason, while at the same time giving really weird, bizarre little snippets of info about her life, like the most basic of basic info, you would probably find more info on her Wikipedia page than what's in here. Um, yeah, that. So, um, that's a thing. They also left out a lot of really important things career-wise that I'm just like, if you included this, why wouldn't you include that? I, I just... I don't really follow, and they seem to zero in on some really bizarre shit that there's no rhyme or reason to it. I just, this thing is so what the fuck. I feel like that is the best way I can sum it up. Like, okay, I'm gonna flip through it, you guys, and just to give you an idea, when page number one is this, um... <laughs> It kind of sets the precedent that this is going to be a horrifying ride. It just... Like, alright, it's the first panel here. Like, it's... I'm trying to tilt it so it'll show the words, but I think it might be a little too bright. I'm trying here... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Does it... Does it show? No, not really. Okay, well basically, it goes, I'm melting, melting, melting. Yeah, right under that is the first lines of mine hair. What? Why? I <laughs> anything in this- or anything is possible in this world, I really believe that. Okay, that is a legit Liza quote, but... So we've gone from the witch melting to the first line of mine hair to random Liza quote. Okay. Okay. I've said it before, but it's absolutely true. My mother gave me my drive. O okay. Also part of Eliza quote, but you're also leaving out half of the quote. And given she seems to say this quote in every single interview she ever gives these days about how her father gave her her dreams, but her mother gave her her drive. I feel like I can like recite it verbatim at this point whenever she does interviews because she does it every interview. So the fact that they felt the need to include it, but not in its entirety, is just weird to me. But that's just me. And then Toto, bark 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 bark. That, that's apparently a speech bubble. Okay then. Not gonna lie, I do like the animation style they used for Vincent. They did him really well. Um, basically, it's just giving the info of when she was born, but being told in first person, but not very good first person. It doesn't sound like Liza, but I'm picky that way. And it continues with the lyrics of mine hair going down the page in between the narration bubbles. 
I'm still not following why exactly they did that. Like, all right, we get it. You're telling the story of Liza Minnelli's life. Obviously, we are looking at Liza, even though it seems to be a lot more Judy heavy than Liza, because it's like, okay, we have Judy. We have more Judy. We have Judy again. We have Judy again over here. And here, and here, and here. Just, you know, if you wanted to include that much Judy, why didn't you make this a Judy Garland comic book instead of a Liza one? And then, like, actually focus on Liza properly in her own? Just, just a thought. I mean, I don't know. There's so many questions. So many questions. I'm, like, scamming through the, scamming, <laughs> scanning through the pages while looking at this. Hoping anything will jump out at me that'll make it make more sense, but still nothing. I mean, I'll give it a proper read through later, but... Just, so much of this, I don't really get why they did it the way they did it. I mean, I like the animation style on some of these, like the Judy from Meet Me in St. Louis, that's pretty good, I, I have to admit. And I like the Vincent over here too, that, that was also nicely done. But then... <laughs> Anybody who's ever seen a picture of Baby Liza, th this does not look like Baby Liza, okay? Liza as a baby was one of the prettiest babies I think I've ever seen, and I'm not saying that because I'm biased, I'm actually serious. She was somehow one of the prettiest babies I have legit ever seen, which is saying something. I've seen a lot of babies, so, um, yeah, they made her look Mexican. I'm having flashbacks to that movie of Lorna's book, um, the Judy Garland, Me and My Shadows, where they inexplicably portrayed Liza as a Mexican for no apparent reason. Yeah. So, so we skip directly from Liza is a baby to cabaret era. Just skipping over a few things, you know. Just a few. Doesn't matter. Like, Judy being alive to dead. Th that totally happened, but not even mentioned. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even seeing anything here detailing anything that happened between point A and point B. Like, never mind that the sterile cuckoo happened, never mind Charlie Bubbles, never mind Tell Me That, that You Love Me, Junie Moon, never mind all the albums she did, never mind the Palladium concert she did with Judy, never mind a shit ton of things that happened between her being born and Cabaret happening. I mean, this just... <sighs> Why? And you'd think maybe... Maybe it's just the one page. Maybe they'll backpedal. Nope. Uh, we go straight from Cabaret to New York, New York. Let me reiterate. Cabaret was 1972. New York, New York was 1977. That's another five years we just totally jumped over. <laughs> This performer got to work with Scorsese and De Niro in 77. And Bobby? Sure, a class A bastard. The film was a flop, but he was an interesting bastard. I wish I were making that up. That is actually on the page. <laughs> it's a good thing I wasn't trying to drink anything while I was reading through this the first time, or I'd probably spit it out everywhere. It just... What the fucking shit. And yet, at this point, we very, very, very briefly backpedal back to, like, Flora the Red Menace, apparently, even though they're only showing her from behind. It tells absolutely nothing about that show other than they went and tinted the picture red. Because Flora the Red Menace. I, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's why they did that. 
And then it goes straight to the act, which was 1977. So we backpedaled to like early 60s for one frame and then skipped forward all those years again. Okay. I am not even sure what the fuck is going on here. We have Liza with, I, I think Liza is illustrated a la like Betty Boop style. I, I don't really understand what's happening here. To the general public, show business may just mean the artistic part, but the dollar and cents element is the reality every performer has to face. Does this tell us anything whatso fucking ever about what is going on right here? Explain. Explain. Cause... <sighs> I don't get it. Oh, oh, oh. But then, we go straight from that? To Arthur. So we just skipped over like another half a decade, basically. 77 to 81. Okay. Now I'm gonna point out that several people, before I got a hold of this, were like, you're gonna be pissed off when you see how they animated Dudley. So I went into this really, really worried about how they were gonna draw him. I don't see what the big deal was. I like how they drew him. I think they drew him cute. Sean Gilgood, not so much. That they, they didn't do him any favors, but Dudley, they did well. I mean, even that older Dudley, I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. Dudley's not an easy person to draw. And I've had a lot of people, I've tried to commission a lot of people to draw him for me, and he really, apparently, must be a hard person to draw because almost no one can get it right. So, the fact that they even got it that close, you know what? More power to them. So, there's that. I like that they totally have a Mornelli moment here with, Dudley's gone now, and I miss him. It's like, well, A, she, she wouldn't say it in quite those words. She has more heartfelt words than that. She's said in every interview that mentions Dudley since his passing, but okay. Um, there's a lot of other people here that had passed on that they didn't feel the need to mention, but okay. Well, let's mention Dudley. Just... What cracks me up, though, about the first Arthur one that I just now noticed... They included the creeper black guy in the background. Now, I made an entire blog post pointing this guy out in screenshots that I took from the film because every place you pause it that this guy is shown, his face is... Yeah. They're pretty much worth a thousand words. That's all I can say. Okay. We've gone straight from Arthur. Eliza entering Betty Ford. So, just skip over another three years there, from 81 to 84. I... <laughs> I'm trying to understand what's happening under that. Like, if this is her going to Betty Ford, then what the shit is going on here? Like... I'm not quite getting it. Like, is that supposed to be Judy in the mirror? I, I just... Maybe? Maybe? Maybe that's supposed to be Judy. Like, take another look at it. It just dawned on me of... With the eyebrows, perhaps. But, I mean... Suddenly she's a redhead? I mean, I guess there's a couple roles she did as a redhead, but... That... I don't know. I mean, the whole frame is talking about her inheriting the disease of alcoholism, but, um... Yeah, I, I can only assume that has to be Judy. But they didn't really make it Judy-ish enough. So then, over here, we've, we've randomly got Marlena Dietrich with a Marlena quote of her no apparent reason, then oh boy, we knew that they could not resist drawing Liza taking pills. This apparently was necessary. This apparently was necessary. 
because, you know, imaginations couldn't work well enough to visualize that all on your own without a visual of her doing that, despite her going to Betty Ford. I don't even know. And then going straight from that to the quote being about how it was no great tragedy being Judy Garland's daughter. I had tremendously interesting childhood years, except that those years had little to do with being a child. And then goes directly from that, and in the same panel, oh, and smoking is one of the leading causes of all statistics. All right, so basically at this point, they've given up on any semblance of a biography here whatsoever and have resorted to just stringing together any random Liza quotes they could find on the internet. Like this looks like stuff that if you google Liza Minnelli quotes and you go to any site that just has a list of Liza quotes, these are the ones you'll see going down the list going boom 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 down a page of about 20 or so that pop up. And these are the ones that always seem to show up on there. This. It's just really bad. This is really, really bad. <laughs> and then goes from that one to yet another quote that has nothing to do with anything, nor does it even have anything to do with the pictures. I just... I am so lost. It says, but God really did bless me, you know. He really said, all right, come on. I'm still waiting for you. Get over here. Get over here. Uh, okay. Um, so, so we have Liza dancing with, I want to say Ben Vereen, but I can't even tell if that's who this is supposed to be. It's like really ambiguous black guy with a fro. It, it might be Ben Vereen, it might be someone else, but the only one I can think of as a dancer that would have had anything to do with Liza would, would be Ben Vereen, I think. I think. I mean, it's a whole page of her with him, but I don't think she ever performed on stage with him back when she was young, did she? I mean, I know she did that magazine cover with him, but I'm really, really lost. And it never says anywhere on this entire page who that's supposed to be. Okay, so, so now it finally decides to backpedal this far in, back to first network TV appearance, the Jack Parr program, 1962. Um, so let me get this straight. We basically skipped over 90% of her career up until 1984, and now we go back to the beginning, to 1962? Are you fucking kidding me? This is like the midway point of the book. Like, if you just let it fall open to like the middle, this is the page it opens to, by the way. They did draw her pretty well, though. Although, if they were gonna go to that extent, you'd think that. I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't that the performance where she had the cast on her leg, if I remember right? I wanna say that was Jack Parr program, but maybe I'm wrong. Um. So. Skips from that to Journey Back to Oz. So we've gone straight from 1962 to 1974 in one fell swoop. That leaves out a ton of things she was in. I just, I don't understand if this person was just that unaware of her career or was on crack when they were making this, or just, what the fuck? So, okay, so it goes from 1962 to 1974 to 1979 on The Muppet Show, as if these were her biggest appearances somehow? Not really. And then goes straight to Muppets in Manhattan in 1984. Okay, so we're going from one Muppets thing to the next Muppets thing, and anything else she did in the meantime apparently didn't matter because it wasn't the Muppets. So, you know, just as an aside. Oh, oh but apparently rent -a cop matters, because rent -a cop is the next thing that's mentioned. So, you know, the next, like, three years of her career didn't matter until rent -a cop which... 
I, I actually am one of the few people who really loves Run a Cop, not gonna lie. Um, but what the fuck is going on with Burt Reynolds' face here? Like, um, no. Just. I will show you what the cover of Rent a Cop looks like and let you guys decide. Let me get it. <laughs> because this is just a travesty, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. I don't fucking find Rent a Cop. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. Comparison time. This? Or this? D do these two guys look like the same guy to you? Or oh, oh, getting too much glare? I'm trying to tell. Alright, you decide. You decide. Um, yeah, th that animation looks nothing like Burt Reynolds. That is my analysis. Um, so okay, so we skip straight from rent -a to Liza Minnelli live from Radio Music City, or Radio, <laughs> I can talk to Liza Minnelli live from Radio City Music Hall in 1992. Um, so I am having so many freaking issues with this thing not having stuff in order and just blatantly leaving out huge chunks of her career. I can't even begin to tell you how big of an issue I am having with this. And does it backpedal at that point? Oh no. No, 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 no. And now we're back again to talking about Judy and Vincent once again. It, it just... <sighs> All while at the same time peppering it with random frigging quotes that may or may not have anything to do with the pictures. Like some of them may vaguely tie in, other ones have nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. I do like this animation here though, not gonna lie. Doesn't really work with the caption, but the way they drew it was pretty nice. Now this next page, oh my gosh, so many issues, so many issues. They did one that is just a spread of her husband's. We've got Liza with Peter Allen. I'm gonna let that sink in. Liza with Jack Haley Jr. Poor Jack, I just... Jack, you deserve better. You were the best to her. You deserve so much better than this. We've got March, Mark Darrow, who um, apparently is a lumberjack now, according to this, for no apparent reason whatsoever. And David Guest. I'm going to allow you a moment to all throw up in your mouths. They animate him just as horrifying as he looks in real life. Although, I do like that they include The Divorce from Hell, 2007, which I don't think that's correct. They were only together for 16 months before filing for divorce, and when it was finalized, I want to say that was 2006, not 2007. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was 2006. But, you know, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm still hung up on Mark Jarrow randomly being a lumberjack, though. He's not a lumberjack. He's not. And of course, more David Guest, because he's so horrifying that they can't leave it well enough alone, and they keep having to go back to David. Oh, oh, oh. But now we've gotten into the part of the book where they're going on and on about her substance abuse. Like, what is this? What is this? Um... Is, is this just supposed to represent her drinking problem? That apparently when she drinks booze it turns into stars? I, I just... I don't quite get that. Um, even in an addiction context, I really, 
really just, I'm very confused. I is she being drugged by it in addition to the booze? I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh, oh, but, you know, Studio 54 picture here with a shit ton of celebrities. We've got everyone from Mick Jagger, Donna Summer, Jim Morrison, which, um, I think he was long dead by the time of Studio 54. We've got Liza, obviously. We've got, uh, Warhol over here. We've got Bowie. We've got Farrah Fawcett. I can't quite tell everyone else while upside down, so I'm gonna leave it at that, but extrapolate as you will. But, yeah. Then it starts changing style in animation. Like, I don't know if they got a different animator at this point, or if they're trying to, like, put across, like, a message with the different drawing style, or what's going on. But, um, yeah, it was a good indicator with the Greek-looking, um, border along here that we start getting down to, like, this part of the page at the bottom, and where Liza's snorting coke, it looks like Greek beings in the background, but I don't know if those are supposed to be the muses or the fates or what those are supposed to be, but, um, again, with the random quotes, Across this page, we've got the regrets of yesterday and the fear of tomorrow can kill you. You know, well, on this cheery little drawing at the bottom here, it's quite disturbing, really. Um, yeah. But not as disturbing as this one. What the fuck is... I just... I... I'm really just trying to figure out why it's randomly animated like Disney's Hercules. I, I... Yeah. And it doesn't get much better as it goes down the page. Like, I don't know who these people are supposed to be, but it seems to continue being the Greek people. And, um... Yeah, th that was a nice touch there at the bottom. Is is this supposed to be her, like, after Mark Gerald beat the snot out of her? Like, what what is this? What, what even is going on here? I'm so fucking lost on this. And then, okay, right after the Studio 54 debacle here, now we're back to Peter Allen, and like apparently her just meeting Peter Allen. What the crap? Like, how out of sequence has this gotten? And it goes on about Peter's sexuality over here with. He was gay, I'm fairly certain. There were even rumors he spent our wedding night with his boyfriend. I'll never tell. Never. Um... I'm pretty sure that is telling, and that we all already knew that. And then, over here, we have more random super young Liza with the long hair, and... Actually, I think it was drawn adorably, but at the same time, I just... I don't really understand what's going on here. And then over here, drawn in the style of the famed David and Liza wedding photo, we've got Liza with her other three husbands all in one photo. We've got Jack, we've got Mark, and we've got David looking absolutely, utterly horrifying as usual. Oi. But I like how snarky they are about David every time his name pops up in here. Like, David collected Shirley Temple memorabilia. I offer this info with no comment. 
I have no comment either then. You know, just leave it at that. But look, they got Michael. They got Michael Jackson. I'm sorry, I had to do the Michael voice. I actually love Michael. Let's not rag on Michael. But I think that's the only time he's mentioned in here, which... How the fuck does David get more of a mention than Michael when Michael was in her life for so many more years? But... What even? We've got, like, the entire lower half of the page is just shit with David. Like, the VH1 reality show thing failing and all that. It's utterly horrifying. Uh, and then we've got more shit with David and the divorce, apparently, over here. Uh, yeah, it's just got a little tiny blurb about what they countersued each other for during the divorce, which this is a very watered down version of that, but yeah. Then we've got these fairly dark looking photos. Is Liza suddenly the Batman? I don't even know. I don't even know. And then we skip to, or are we skipping back? I mean, given the timing of David, th this is actually backpedaling a little bit to the Liza 9-11 tribute thing that she did with the, I think it was with the Yankees. I I'm really not good with sports, but they actually animated that really well, because I've seen the video of that, and they did do a pretty good job of it. Um, yeah. They mention randomly, since 1980, Sinatra's version is played in Yankee Stadium after every home run win. My version is played after every home loss. Is that true? That's fucked up if that's true, because Liza's is the original. But, yeah, they've got that in there with... That's just rude, okay? I'm not gonna lie. That's just rude. <laughs> Along with a list of several of her hospitalizations, the sad thing is that's not even all of them in that time frame. But this shows how recent this is. We've got the No Hate campaign picture. We've got Liza and Gaga. We've got the Sex in the City thing. Then it backpedals something. Like I said, this thing has a real problem with continuity and keeping things in order. But now we're back to Cabaret again. And now... Inside the Actors Studio, which was like 2005 or 2006. I like how they did Jim Swift in love. Actually, the whole thing is really good. We've got Buster and Lucille 2 in Arrested Development, which also pretty well done. Um, but to show how truly recent this was made, we've even got the blue hair from the Oscars earlier this year. That is a thing in here on the last page of it, because this is just an ad over here. This isn't part of it. But the last frame, once again, goes back to Judy. May as well have made this the fucking Judy Garland story. Like, I'm not even joking right now. Also, they made her look like a dude in over half of these drawings. Um, I get that she's a gay icon, I get that there's a lot of drag queens that dress as Liza, but... That, she doesn't look that much like a guy. I mean, people who are mean about her appearance might say so, but she really doesn't look that guy-ish. But, um, overall, on the whole, I will say... Um, unless you're getting one of the cheaper editions, 
probably don't waste your money unless you're just doing it as a laugh. Um, if you're doing it to learn something about Liza, definitely don't waste your money. You're better off reading the Wikipedia page, because this leaves out so freaking much of her career, it disgusts me. Like, literally over half the things she's been in are not even mentioned in this. I mean, I realize there's not a whole lot you can do with 24 pages, but... For the things they randomly decided to include, and then the things they randomly decided to exclude, there's really no rhyme or reason at all to this, and I just, I don't understand how they went about picking which things made the cut. I mean, there are some pretty major projects that didn't even get so much as the tiniest nod. Yeah, basically, I have a bunch of issues with how this was done. Um, even though I'm not that good at drawing, I feel like I probably could have done this better, but yeah, this is where one of these people were like, yeah, you could have, but you didn't, and somebody else did it instead. So, put up or shut up, basically. I know. But, <sighs> I would really say don't waste your time. If you're really curious just to see what it's got in it, maybe this would be a thing that the ebook version would be the way to go, because at least then... You're not stuck with it hanging around if you hate it, and it's at least the cheapest edition if you go with a digital route. And that's really about all I've got to say on that. Um, yeah, I feel like it could have been done much better, and I'm pretty let down that that's all that it had, and I still actually really would prefer to see a comic book version of Super Liza, so get on that.